Alrighty, we watched the first episode of Gotobu no Hanayome. The or... quintessential dipshits. <laughs> the quintessential quintuplets. Five uh, twins, well, you know, quintuplets, I guess. I don't know why, I, I didn't need to explain it, I didn't need to say what that meant. Uh, there's quintuplets, they're dumb, they're I guess. really dumb, and they all have and really red rich. hair, and they're rich. Well, some some form of red hair. They're, they're all redheads. Um, there's Except one for one like has pink hair. They're uh, all warm-haired colors. Yeah, and <laughs> the, the main character is a guy who's who's really smart and really poor, He's a he's a he cheapskate. The, the beef barbecue bowl without the beef. Or is it without the barbecue? Without the beef. Oh. Well, in any case, the joke was uh, that there it's just rice. <laughs> he he finds an opportunity to tutor for these quintuplets, um, and since his family has debt problems, he's going to do that. And that's the plot. That's all that really matters. Um, the first episode is just introducing us to all the girls and, um, you know, creating a scenario for him to end up meeting them. It's it's very standard harem shit. Mm -hmm. I hate harem shows where there is an obvious, like, wife character yeah there is a wife in the show he marries one of them yeah that's the thing like the 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 idea is that he eventually is going to marry one and even though they show her face she doesn't quite have the same hair as any of the girls do implying that she could be any of them we're not sure which one it is except that there's only one who has focus put on her like it's transparently obvious that the one who he met first and who has the most interactions with him is going to be the one. Like, who else would it be, you know? Like, she's, and she's, they make her, like, the standard girl character. Like, the standard, uh, you know, number one in the harem. I don't understand why harem shows do that. Why they make it, like, so there's an obvious candidate, and then have four other characters who just, you know, are, are there to... Just exist. Yeah, it's like they're acting as though it could be any of them, but it's totally fucking not. Like, it's definitely the one, unless they're gonna go for, like, a last-minute twist ending or something. But, like, obviously it's gonna be the one who's the I mean, main girl. I don't really care which one it is. No. all really. of the girls sucked. They did. They were not... None of them were interesting. None of them were entertaining to watch. Uh, it's funny, because they... They're quintuplets, so they're all, like, the same height, and they all have giant tits. They all have the same giant tits, which is a weird thing for a harem show. Because, like, usually in a harem... You want some variation? Yeah, like, the like all the girls are different. a harem is, like, oh, you get to pick from a bunch of different girls. You got right. every type of girl, and, like... I guess in this case, you... It's just like, if you like this body type, here are five personalities with that body type. So maybe that, you know, uh, I guess it just, it narrows down things a little bit for you. It's like, you don't have to, you don't have to measure whether they're hot against their personality. They all five are the same body. So, um, I don't know. None of them are, nothing in this jumped out at me in any way. It was like... The girls are a little attra- I, I, I could see somebody watching this if they think that the girls are really hot. Like, they if they are your type. They look way better in the manga. Like, Do I've they? Seen I have the seen the manga art. Yet. They look like- I just, like, don't think they look that well in the show. Um, yeah. And it just know. has no originality or personality at all. Nothing surprised me. Like, no. it just felt like I was, you know, going through the motions of a setup. Yeah. Uh. It stayed that way. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's exactly what you'd expect. Like, if you see the cover and read the description, you know what you're getting yourself into, and uh, there's no reason to bother. It wasn't terrible enough that we stopped the episode halfway or anything, but, like, I, I was just kind of waiting for there to be something more to it, and that didn't happen. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Fucking hell, we made it through, like, four minutes of girly Air Force. Why would they decide to overload the first like couple of minutes with the worst like the worst things everything they could do. <laughs> it was like the ugliest water the most 
the worst soundtrack I've heard in a yeah. while. The, the music in this show is like extremely cheesy, dramatic music. Oh. It opens with an action scene where there's like a bunch of boats being attacked by like a, um, basically the new Roy from Strike Witches, uh, like a, a, a alien flying craft. A ton of explosions that look yeah. like dog shit. It, it was just like badly directed action. Everything looked everything looked terrible. The CG looked terrible. The 2D looked terrible. The way we're introduced to the main character is just like cut to a kid on a boat going, oh shit, stuff's happening. And immediately you know it's the main character just yeah. because he looks like a main character. But like it was such a, such a weird way of like introducing him. Um, and it's just like a four minute action scene that all looks and sounds terrible. The audio mixing is really bad. Like the music is too loud and all the sound effects are too quiet. Um, I mean, I don't know what else to say. It's just a really bad production. Why would they try to air this? Yeah, it, it, like... it's the kind of thing you look at and you go, okay, well, I'm obviously not watching that. I like... felt like this was going to be a show <laughs> where, like, you know, like the point was the cute girls. Why would they, you know, try to introduce us and get us hooked into the show by literally showing us, like... The worst opening I think I've seen in a while. It's not often that it's I think bad. I'm going to drop a show within 10 seconds, yeah. but I definitely, like, immediately everything was off-putting, and I was just like, well, that, that's, oh, we'll watch enough of it to see if there's anything to this, but no, it, it's, um, vomit. Uh, we did, like, nine minutes of Meiji Tokyo Renka. It's a reverse harem. I can't, like, I can't bring myself to really sit through it when it's so apparent what it it's is. It's taku um, pandering trash. Yeah, a regular looking girl yeah. with about nine pretty boys. And it's not even, like, badly made or produced. It's just, like, if you're not into this, there's nothing in this. I mean, I just think it's pretty generic and, like, I don't know. I'd be willing to give it more of a chance if I like the premise of the show better, but uh, I don't really well, care. He, here's what bothered me that that made me like really want to drop it, um, is there's a style of writing, I'll call it a, I don't know, technique, that I really despise, which is where in order to get the characters you want and to do the things you want, um, you just ignore reality entirely. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I like there to be a... Um, like, if if you so okay, let me just explain what the the idea of the show is. This girl can talk to ghosts. Um, ever since she was a little kid, people have been avoiding her because she talks to ghosts. And this is presented by like showing us a birthday party she had where she had these four friends and she's talking to these ghosts and they all get creeped out. And this continues throughout her whole life until high school. Now the problem is that first of all. Everyone just wholesale accepts that this girl talks to ghosts. Like, we're presented as though this is just something everybody casually believes. And second of all, that everyone has the exact same reaction to that, which is just, oh, that girl talks to ghosts, stay away from her, she's creepy. And it's like, first of all, why would they believe that? Second of all, why would nobody think that was cool or want to talk about it or you know, be interested in any way in this, like, very interesting aspect of her. And third of all, how could she not just hide it? Like, as soon as she realized, because she said that up until that moment, she had not realized that other people didn't see them, all she had to do was play it off and not talk to ghosts in front of people, you know? So it's just like, they just wanted to give this girl the ability to talk to ghosts, and then make her a loner. There had to be some reason that, that people avoid her and that she doesn't talk to anybody. But it doesn't follow. It doesn't follow, like, what people are like. It's like, you you have yeah, to I really mean, stretch my suspension of disbelief. A lot of shows and media in the same kind of vein yeah. do that. Because they want to have a character who, you know, the world is out to get them, yada, yada, yada. Um... Right. It's pandering to have that, and it's just like, 
It's not really well explored. It's kind of no. hard to buy. It's not really that interesting. It's not relatable because she's um, talking to fucking ghosts. Yeah. Like I would think my life would be very different if I talked to ghosts. It wouldn't be just oh I'm a, I mean, I'm a she's loner. She's not like she doesn't really talk about anything interesting of the ghosts that we've seen. It's like yeah. I eat roast beef. Like she she's really into eating mountains of roast beef. I don't know, man. The, there was also a scene where like she's uh, she's passing by some like I guess magic show that's just happening in the streets of Tokyo. It seemed seemed really unlikely really... that this sort of magic show would be going on with like a weird jester man um, trying to get somebody to come into this box. And of course, immediately he says like you know someone step up in the box. Maybe someone who doesn't uh, want to live in this world. And I'm like okay, so she's gonna get isekai into the past by the box, right? But like. He's insisting that she specifically come up, and, like, he says it to her, and she just ignores him, and then he comes up close, like, right next to her, and says, like, you know, I insist, come up in the box, and then it just, like, cuts to her on stage, and she's like, how did I get roped into this? And I'm like, how did you get roped into this? Like, why didn't you just keep walking? What did you, like, did you feel guilty? Did you, it just doesn't make any sense with her character that she would do that. Like, as though somehow this guy insisting caused her to automatically do it. It's like, there's, it just is an excuse for the show to make it happen. Yeah. They didn't come up with any logical way to make that happen. They just made it happen. And then literally have the character be like, how did this happen? And it's like, I, I don't know, you tell me how this fucking happened. So, yeah, that kind of shit bothers me. And, like, right off the bat, that's all the things that happened in this episode so far. So it's just like, nah, I don't want to watch yeah. any more of this. Show sucks. <laughs> Next one. Okie dokie. We just did the first episode of Star Twinkle Precure. And it was precurific. Uh, I've, I've seen, I've seen 22 episodes of Heart Catch, eight episodes of Sweet, the first episodes of a few other seasons. You've been marathoning Precure as of late. Uh, marathoning quotations. I just, like, watch it when I work out, but, um... Well, I mean, you've made it through several whole seasons. Yeah, I've made it through the first, the first two, and then I've watched, um, I watched Hug Toe, which came out last year. This is, like, a very drastic change in direction from, like, the art style of Hug Toe, where that was, like, yeah. more dreamy, and this one is, like, more imaginative and and like storybook-esque almost there's like a colored pencil feel to it yeah and like even when the precures transform they like you know they have a pen and an ink bottle and like they yeah. they draw their own outfit so it's like and they sing during the transformation sequence which is amazing it's so cute i love it <laughs> this this reminds me a lot of a, a magical girl show called fushigi boshi no futago hime or the twin sisters of the mysterious star um which was also space themed and had a this kind of aesthetic but that one is more like uh even more sugary and like ludicrously cute um the, with pre, correct me if I'm wrong on this, because I didn't watch Hug Toe, and I haven't seen as much Precure as you have at this point. But it seems like there's basically two types of Precure: the more grounded ones, where it's more like everyday life in a normal kind of place, but where they they all you know they're still super powered and they're fighting bad guys, and then ones that are more like out there, like this. Where there's, like, one of the Precures is an alien from space, and they are fighting in space. Yeah, I think as the series has kind of grown and has had to be different things, because if yeah. it was just the same show over and over again, and, like, you know, nobody's gonna watch it. Um, like, I'm thinking of how a couple years ago there was Maho Tsukai Precure, which was about magical witch... Like, they went to a witch school, not on, like, Little Witch Academia. Um, and then Hugto was just pretty regular right like it, there wasn't like a crazy gimmick i mean it. there was like time travel and like oh well never mind yeah I, they, I stand correct. they get crazy um yeah like i feel like the older seasons never got like insane like that like i mean they, they go to other dimensions like even in the first sure. series they like you know. But it's just like that. It, this one's like right off the bat. They are in space. Yeah. yeah. Like episode it's... one, alien lands on Earth. Our main character is in a spaceship, blasted into space. 
knocked through the airlock into space and turns into a precure to breathe in space and then fights in space using yeah. like rocket jump abilities. Like, it's pretty fucking nuts. Um, it's it's like it was just surprising to me because I think of Precure as being mostly a show about dealing with like relatable everyday problems, but like through a fighting context. This was like going to I fucking mean, space. I'm sure it will become that, right. but like it did open in a really bombastic kind of like a total tone shift from what you like yeah. was going on in Hug Toe. So it was pretty exciting to see. Um, how did you feel about the character design? Because it's like, it's very cutesy and they kind of look Aikatsu esque. I really like Lala in particular, the alien. Girl. Oh, yeah, she's she my looks favorite. Great. <laughs> um, she looks great. Her voice is super adorable. Um, I wish I could have seen more of her in the first episode, but I, I think episode two is going to be focused on her, so, you know, would maybe watch episode two for that. Um, I, I think I, overall I enjoyed this episode, and, like, there's lots of great shot compositions, like, just good framing and, like, cool-looking stuff, you know? It's, it's cutesy, but it's also, there's always that sci-fi element to it, because it is about space. Um, though the, the idea that, like, her transformation is centered around, like, a ink pen and, like, ink well. Because, like, she, she uses a notebook to transform. And it's, like, a notebook that her granddad gave her, I guess, that she draws constellations in. I just felt like it was a very forced, like, way to have something um, reasonably saleable that could be used as the transformation thing. But it really has nothing to do with space. Yeah. Like, it's kind of an off... Like, it, I... And not really on theme, but, like, it's just a, a thing that, you know... I guess it's a, just an additional theme, is writing yeah. in a notebook. I feel like that'll probably be explored more as we meet more characters, and yeah. maybe one of them's an artist or something. Um, I don't know. Uh, it was pretty interesting, though. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it was kind of slow. Like, the early part of the episode, this show... Because we've been watching so much Aikatsu, like, I, I inevitably was thinking about how this compares to that, and Aikatsu feels more, like, active, and more like, uh, I feel like Aikatsu's aimed for kids a little bit older than Precure, or yeah, at least definitely. this Precure, because this one feels, like, very childish, and, like, like, it moves, sl like, it's moving slow, not just to waste time but like so that little kids so will be able be to understand board. it yeah like yeah. slow enough that you process everything that's going on especially in one like this where there's just like a, a fairly high concept space, yeah but um just like everything from the moment when like the spaceship lands and they go off and fight in space like the early part of the episode was was cute and fun but, like, there wasn't really much... Like, the character didn't have much depth or anything. She's just kind of a... She's just a Genki girl, you know? She's just excited about space. She has this thing where she says, tween cool, which makes more sense in English because she's saying kira yaba, which is, like, kira kira... You know, kira is a star sound effect. And yaba is short for yabai, which means bad, but in, it's like bad as in good, the same way it is in America. So it is used as cool. So she's saying like the sound effect for a star and cool, but in Japanese, kirayaba doesn't, it's not a pun, it doesn't mean anything. In English, twin cool makes perfect sense. So that's weird. Uh, I don't know, maybe it is a pun in Japanese and I just don't get it, but like the translation made more sense than the actual dialogue, but like. That's very indicative of her personality, yeah. as somebody who just is like, oh, this is twin cool, like, and, like, she's always excited about everything, every, you know, her family, everyone around her is just nice people. So the first half of the episode, the, like, establishing character part is just, she likes space and she's a Genki girl, you know, there's nothing more going on there, um, but then the other Precure lands from space and is an alien. I don't know if this is going to be more plot-driven than a typical Precure, just because, like, what the hell is Alien Girl's story going to be? Like, she's not even from Earth. Like, whatever you explore with her is going to be yeah. something alien. I mean, the alien. last season was pretty plot-heavy, so I feel like, you know, they're going to do the same with yeah. this one. Yeah, going even further in that direction. Um, the singing during the transformation... 
definitely did make me think like they were trying to get in on some of that Aikatsu money so they have more songs to sell. Yeah, I mean, you know? <laughs> I, I think so. I think they realized that like that's what girls are into and they wanted to kind of try out that style for this year's Precure and I was kind of skeptical at first when I saw like the, the characters be announced. I was like, oh god, like these look like Aikatsu ripoffs, but I like them. I'm interested. I'm gonna watch more. The alien Lala, even more so than the girl from Aikatsu, she kind of reminds me of the robot girl from that that green haired robot girl from that one show. Fuck. Was Dimension W? Oh, I thought you were gonna talk about the Jenny is from uh, no, My Life I, as a Teenage I don't, Robot. I don't know that shit. <laughs> Uh, she kind of reminds yeah. me of the robot girl from Dimension W for some reason. Yeah, I, can I think see it's just that. a little thing in her, the streak in her hair. But yeah, I mean, I uh, I don't think I can see myself like immediately going to watch more of this. Like, uh, there are only five episodes out, so if I wanted to get in while the getting was good and be able to watch this with you weekly, like it's it, not worth it. It would be possible, but like right now. We are currently, like, watching random episodes of Aikatsu Friends. And that's already, like, an undertaking in itself. Because yeah. there's, like, 50 episodes. And I'm the type who, if I talk about a show, I'm basically done with it. You know, like, when I, when we, when I put Aikatsu Friends in Finish or Fail and in the, the top 15 anime, I did so with the knowledge that I was risking never watching any more of it. And the only reason I have been is that you suggest it. We'll be, like, about to eat, and you'll be like, let's watch Aikatsu. And I'm like, oh, that's right. I can continue watching this show, and I really like it. I run the risk of having two of those at once, you know, yeah, I just competing don't think you're going to get anything time. out of the show that would be worth the 50-episode endeavor that it is. It depends. I mean, if I hear that this one's really good. Because, like, that's the thing about Precure is that... Um, it's always difficult for me to jump on the current Precure when I haven't finished the ones that I already know are good. Like, yeah. I still haven't finished Heart Catch, and I love Heart Catch, and so if I start a new one and it doesn't immediately grab me as much as Heart Catch did, then I always have the feeling like, I need to finish Heart Catch first. But will I ever finish Heart Catch is really the question. The world may never when know. When I get there, we could just watch it together. We could do that. Um... Well, if this one turns out to be great, I will definitely be interested. And you're clearly going to yeah, watch it all anyways. I'm going to watch it anyways. So, uh... Because I'm a sick, sick autistic woman. <laughs> <laughs> all right. There you go. If you like Precure, you have no reason not to watch Star Twinkle Precure. And if you like cute girls in space, check it out.